Hi, I'm Chess GM Matthew Sadler. And I'm Natasha Regan, a WIM at Chess. Welcome to our video on an introduction to Shogi for chess players. Matthew and I both started learning Shogi a few months ago and we found it's a really fantastic game. We got into it because of our work with Alpha Zero. Now, Alpha Zero is the self taught uh, computer built by DeepMind that taught itself chess and became uh, extremely superhuman strength at chess. It also became superhuman strength at Go and Shogi. So, in Shogi, it beat the 2017 Computer Shogi Champion Elmo, uh, beat it 98% uh, of its black games and 91% of games overall, so very, very strong. Um, and Alpha Zero taught itself completely how to play Shogi. Uh, so we've also taught ourselves how to play Shogi. Um, and a disclaimer, first of all, Matthew and I are both beginners at Shogi. Uh, but what we wanted to do was introduce it to chess players um, and show what a, a great game it is. Um, and we're, so we're going to show you the rules very quickly and then have a grudge match and play a speed game of Shogi um, and talk about it while we play just to give you a feel of the game. So we can't promise you brilliant moves, um, but we'll give you a flavour of Shogi. Yeah, so um, uh, one of the uh, interesting things about uh, the Shogi world. I mean, Shogi has been played in its current form with the uh, current rule set since about the 16th uh, century. So you know, just like chess has got an incredibly rich history, um, incredible number of, uh, of uh, recorded games. Um, the thing that uh, interested me actually was uh, that um, uh, Shogi has a, a very strict system for allowing people to become professionals. So it's not like chess where uh, anyone can do it. Um, you have to actually pass an exam, in fact, to uh, to join the professional ranks. And uh, at the moment uh, in uh, um, in Japan, there's, uh, I think uh, I counted, it was 167 uh, active uh, male professionals and 59 active uh, female professionals. So, you know, very restricted number of uh, professionals. Of course, there are many, many amateurs who, uh, who play shogi. And of course, it's Japanese chess, so the, the nation that, uh, that dominates is Japan. So, how do we play Shogi? We're going to show you the rules of Shogi. We're going to tailor it to chess players so we assume you already know how the chess pieces move. And we're going to show you how Shogi works. So we're going to talk about um, the moves of the pieces, how they promote, uh, how you drop pieces, and how the game plays. So first of all, it's on a 9 by 9 board, so a little bit bigger than a chess board. Um, and so it's played, you, you call, call it uh, black and white or sente and gote, but they're not actually different colours. Um, and so you can see on our show you board the pieces line up. Um, so these ones are uh, black, these are white. The only difference is that little mark on the key. Um, and you can tell whether it's your piece or not by the way it's pointing. So these pieces are pointing up the board, these pieces are pointing down the board. We will whiz through the pieces. So starting with the king. So the king is very similar to the chess king. So it moves sort of one square any direction. The rook is very similar to the chess rook. So it moves forwards and sidewards. Can't uh, jump over pieces jump over just pieces. like chess. It can take pieces just like in chess. Uh, and the bishop is just like the chess bishop and moves diagonally. You'll notice these are all pieces with um, Japanese characters on it. It takes a little while to learn, but we recommend going straight to, to these characters. Um, there's this, this sort of simplified Western shogi sets available, but we recommend just going straight for the real thing. Um, yeah, it feels more fun, doesn't it? It feels more fun. Um, okay, so these are the pawns. Uh, so the pawns move rather like chess pawns, but not exactly the same. So they move one square forward. They don't move two on the first move. They just move one square forward. Um, and the big difference to chess pawns is that they also take forward. So this pawn can capture this pawn here. 
Yeah, and funnily enough, uh, when I first learned the rules of chess from my grandfather, uh, th this was actually how he played. So it was, uh, it was, uh, yeah, I was actually learning to play shogi as well without realising it. Uh, yeah, it would I, be a shogi natural. <laughs> I did, uh, I did have to, to do a quick rule relearn before playing my first chess tournament, but that was, uh, yeah. I'll just point out when, when we took this pawn, it actually came here and it's actually become one of my pieces. So when you take an opponent's piece, it actually becomes one of your pieces to put on the board later. I'll just carry on with the rest of the pieces. So these ones in the corner are lance, lancers, and they are a bit like an underpowered rook, really. They can't go sideways at all, but they can go forwards. Um, and they can't go backwards they can't either. Go backwards. So, so actually, quite a lot of the shogi pieces have a bias towards going forwards and not going backwards. So you have to be a little bit careful how forward, far forwards you put your pieces because they can't go back again. So this lance can't go back at all. Um, this knight. This is the knight. This moves just like a chess knight, except that it only goes the furthest forward it can go. So it has to go two squares forward and one to the side. Uh, so it could, if the square were empty, it could go to here, it could go to here, but it could not go to there, and it cannot go backwards. Yeah, can slightly, can, that's one of the one of the difficult things for chess players to get used to when uh, just when trying to calculate a little bit. Yeah, it takes a bit of practice. Okay, the two kind of new pieces for chess players are the gold generals and the silver generals. These are lined up right near your king. So the gold generals immediately either side of the king, silver generals one square further out. Um, gold general moves like a king, except for it can't go diagonally backwards. So it can so say it was here, it can go to the three squares forward of it. It can go to the two squares sideways of it. It can go to the one square straight backwards, but it cannot go here. And it cannot go here. The silver general can go diagonally plus all the plus the one square straight forwards. So again it has a forward bias, so it can go diagonally, 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 and the one square forward. So both the silver and the gold are very short range, slow moving pieces that can only go one square at a time. Okay, so that's how the pieces move. I'm now going to show you how the pieces promote. So, so say we're starting as this army. Um, we start on these three ranks closest to us. The promotion zone is the three ranks furthest away from us. So if a piece gets to the promotion zone, so any of these three squares, it can choose, or you can choose for it, whether or not you want to promote it. Okay, um, so let's show you with the pawn first of all. We'll just go straight up. So here it's reached its promotion zone, and now we can choose promotion or unpromotion. So we could choose to leave it as a pawn. But what I'm going to do actually is to promote it because uh, it's more powerful. And what it turns into, or what happens is the piece flips over, so you see a character on the back of it, um, and it'll be a red character once it's a promoted piece. And this piece, uh, the promoted pawn, can now move just like a gold general, uh, which, as I'm sure you all remember, is the, is the let's, let's just see the second bit. So it's the three squares to the forward, two squares to the side, and then one square back, so basically everything I think can do, but not diagonally backwards. Okay, um, now actually lots of the pieces when they get to this promotion zone would promote into a gold general. So it's just the same whether it's a pawn, whether it's a lance, whether it's a knight, or whether it's a silver, they all would promote to move to be moving like a gold general. The gold doesn't promote at all, it stays as a gold general. The king stays as a king. Um, and actually, quite often, it does get into the promotion zone. Um, the rook and the bishop both get stronger when they promote, and they turn into themselves, plus the ability to move like a king, 
um, so the rook can move like a rook, but also um, adds in the diagonal squares, um, just like a king, just, just one square. Um, and the bishop moves like a bishop, um, but adds on the king moves. So actually a bishop could, uh, we'll say for chess players, change colour, although of course the squares here aren't coloured, uh, but you can leap onto a different diagonal once you've promoted a bishop. A promoted bishop is called a horse, and a promoted rook is called a dragon. Yeah, it's a, it's a big uh, attacking uh, um, option to, uh, to promote pieces like that because, uh, yeah, for example, a, a pawn just um, um, just moving on, onto the uh, uh, onto the seventh rank there suddenly turns into uh, well, a, a powerful unit that's uh, that's close to the uh, to the opponent's king. So it's a big attacking uh, potential with uh, with promoting like that. Yeah. Now, one thing is that you don't actually have to promote. So I'll show you an example. This isn't a good move, but it uh, shows you what I mean. Um, so actually, if I move, if I move my rook across, or something. okay. So if we move this bishop to here and take this pawn, it is defended, but okay. Um, we are going to choose not to promote it, so I'm going to click unpromotion. In that case, it just stays as a bishop. You, you wouldn't actually choose to do this as a bishop because there's no downside to promoting it. But actually some of the pieces you might want to keep as they are and not turn them into gold. Okay, this is checks on with this king. Um, you, you would capture that in a normal game. Normal game you capture it, of course, but what I want to give you is the example. So actually, if you start in the promotion zone and then you move either within the promotion zone or move out of the promotion zone, that move you can still choose to promote. So say we move this bishop back here. We can choose promotion now, and there you are. It's a horse. Yeah, that was one of the things that always com well, confused me at the start with the uh, the rules as they're normally written up. It wasn't clear to me that when a piece le is in the promotion zone, unpromoted, and then leaves out, go moves outside the promotion zone, it can then then be promoted on that move. That's uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, slightly confusing things about it. Okay, so in the gameplay, then both the sides take turns to play. Um, when you capture a piece, as you've seen, it becomes uh, part of your army. And then for each move, you can choose to either play a move on the board or else drop a piece on. It's a bit like, if you say, bug house, if you've ever played that as a chess player. Um, and so you get these, these uh, very lovely combinations and attacking games by using your dropped pieces. Okay, there's... Um, uh, the aim of the game is checkmate, just as in chess. Um, there's three like technical rules that I'm going to just quickly whiz through um, and then move on to playing the game. So one thing is you can't put a piece so far forward that it doesn't have a legal move. So this particularly applies to like knights and pawns and lances. So say a lance, because it only goes forward. If it gets to the end, you can't leave it as a lance, you have to promote it. So if you're going to be moving a piece so far forward that it um, doesn't have a legal move, you have to promote it. Yeah, the knight's the other big one for, uh, for that. Yeah, so if the knight got as far as here, um, then it, it wouldn't have a legal move because it's, remember, it's two forwards and one to the side. So if the knight gets as far as, as that second last rank, then you have to promote it into a gold. Um, also, for pawns, you cannot drop them on a file where there already is a pawn. So you can only have one pawn um, of your army on each file. It, it's okay, if, actually, if it's a promoted pawn. So I could not, because there's already a pawn here, I could not drop this pawn here, say, because I've already got a pawn here. But this is a promoted one, so that doesn't matter. So I could drop, I could drop it all the way as far as here if I wanted to. There you go. And it appears on the board. Yeah, the nice thing about um, having pawns as promoted pieces is that when they're captured, then they go back to being pawns in the opponent's uh, uh, reservoir of pieces. So uh, um, actually, you get the whilst it's on the board promoted, you get the benefit of its uh, power. But when it goes back to the opponent, it's just a mere pawn. Yes. So, uh, so that's why that's why promoted pawns are very very important in uh, in shogi. And if you you can drop something directly into the promotion zone, but you see, I just dropped that pawn there. You don't the move you 
you drop it on, you don't get the choice of promoting it then. Um, but then the next move, or if you moved it out of the promotion zone, um, then you could promote it if you're moving that piece. Okay. Um, one more little rule is that you can't drop a pawn to give checkmate. So you can drop a piece to give checkmate, you can drop a pawn to give check, but you can't, you can move a pawn to give checkmate, but you can't drop a pawn to give check piece. Okay, that's the end of the rules. Um, of course, if you are going to learn shogi properly, you'll want to do it, sit down, get a shogi booklet um, and, and learn the rules more slowly. Um, there's also an excellent resource um, in English to learn shogi, which is the Hidechi YouTube videos. They're really fantastic. It's about 35 to 40 videos and they tell you all about the rules and also the strategy of shogi. Yeah, and once you get a little bit further, there's uh, stuff about uh, typical shogi openings. Uh, yeah, I mean, a uh, really excellent resource. I think uh, every you know Western person who's wanted to learn shogi has, uh, has made use of them. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, now are you ready for the, the challenge? I was born ready. Shogi oh game. my goodness. Okay, let's give that a go then. Two beginners playing against each other. Natasha is going to be black and she'll be playing from the bottom of the board. I'll be playing white from the uh, from the top of the board. I'm uh, just going to start a new game. Start. Um, yeah, by the way, um, for uh, for those who are interested, um, I'm using Shogi GUI uh, software, which is um, uh, you can download it. Uh, we'll probably give you those links as well. And um, um, it installs in Japanese, but uh, with the right instructions, <laughs> you can actually switch it to English language. And uh, and then it's very, very nice. You also get an engine and a database as well. So, so I have started with my Rook's Pawn. I'm pushing it up the board. And I'm hoping to uh, gain some space and uh, open up the line against Matthew's Bishop. Yeah, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play my pawn here, which uh, opens up the line of my bishop. I mean, we're just uh, sort of uh, activating our pieces quite uh, early. So Natasha's looking to move that pawn forwards and uh, actually exchange it. And what happens is when she'll exchange a pawn, she'll get a pawn in hand, which means she can then drop it uh, a bit further up the board afterwards. So what you tend to do, um, I think, <laughs> if uh, if I've learned it correctly, is to stop that. So this bishop moves one square here, just stopping the uh, the pawn from advancing forward. I'm going to open up the line of the bishops, so I'm going to offer Matthew the exchange of bishops. I don't know if he'll take it. Well, you see, the problem is this bishop is defending the, this advance of this pawn. So if uh, Natasha exchanges it, then, um, well, I won't be stopping it anymore. So I'm, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to block the exchange of bishops by moving my pawn here. It's protected by my bishop. Um, actually, they recommend for beginners that uh, don't allow uh, exchanges of bishops. Uh, just remember, pieces that, uh, that you capture um, are actually uh, yours. And bishop drops are very tricky to deal with. They can drop, be dropped uh, within your territory in the most unusual ways. Well, what I'm going I to didn't do... mind an exchange of bishop because I'm a beginner, but Matthew's a beginner as well. Although I do know he's very strong at chess, so maybe I should be worrying about that sort of thing. What I'm going to do, um, I've actually learned um, that this is, uh, the way that Natasha's playing it is a little bit wrong, <laughs> I thought. Because, we'll um, see, we'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> because um, what I can actually do is oppose her attack on this side directly with my rook. So there we are, that's what I'm doing. Okay. So what I'm reading into this is that Matthew's probably going to put his king over on this side. Um, and I think, actually, I think I've read this as a very defensive move, so he's obviously pretty afraid of my uh, shogi prowess. Um, what I'm going to do, I think I might put my king over this side as well, I guess. Um, so... well, time's ticking, Natasha. Oh, I'm well ahead of you. <laughs> In terms of time, I've got nearly a minute more. Okay, so I'm going to go here. Yeah, you did spend uh, quite a bit of time just uh, um, developing your uh, um, your pieces quite early. Oh, that's maybe one good thing that we haven't really mentioned is that there's no castling move in uh, in shogi. So, um, but there's a which means that uh, you have to do it all manually, and there's an awful lot of uh, of exotic names and strategies for castling. I am setting up the Mino Castle. 
and I am castling along here. And I have a feeling this might be a boat castle that I'm going for. Oh, are you going for a boat? I think so. I think you're going for a crab first of all. A crab first. And then a yagura afterwards. Oh, maybe. I've got, uh, I think I've got a better grasp of the names than Natasha. Yeah, you do. But let's see about the play. Ha <laughs> 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 ha ha. Right. Okay. Fine. So um, this one is uh, the first thing of the Mino Castle. All these um, uh, castling ideas, by the way, are um, they're, they're aimed to give strength for an attack from the side. So if you can imagine, you know, uh, that Natasha's rook breaks through, then um, um, I'm aiming to be covered from the side uh, from there. And obviously you might also have an attack from uh, from forwards as well. So I'm going to finish up setting up my, my Mino. Um, so the Mino is made up of the, the silver and the two golds of the king there. That's what I'm claiming, yes, if I've remembered it correctly. Okay. I'm going to get my knight out now. Actually, in shogi, um, you, you quite often wait to develop your knights because they can only go forwards and they can't go back. So people say chess players always get their knights out too early in shogi, so I'm probably... Right, we'll okay. See, but... So just uh, see the knight can't actually move here, remember, because it would be captured by my pawn. That's quite uh, nice. So I think what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to move this pawn up here because that's uh, moving your uh, your side pawns is quite a, a common way. And actually in the Mino castle, if I remember correctly again, um, by the way, you know, anything that we're saying about, oh, this is how people normally do it, please <laughs> yeah, check it, please check, 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 check it yourself. It <laughs> because, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're only really parroting what we <laughs> <laughs> what well, we think we've uh, we've understood so uh um yeah and uh it's right. uh i'm, I'm gonna a, bring my silver in. we're both good chess players but we're not very good shogi players all right so one of the ways you often do this is um you you uh, set up your basic casting then you start developing it and i think i'm uh i'm this is a pretty standard way of developing your mino uh castle uh, i might claim this is called the high mino but uh I'm not absolutely positive about that. As you can see, there's a whole uh, uh, part of the game here where you, uh, ooh, Natasha's bringing uh, the bishop to uh, to this diagonal. So maybe hoping to try and uh, push this pawn I forward. I was hoping you wouldn't notice that. Right, well, I think I've noticed it, but no, I'm now- You're gonna let me. Um, I think I'm protected, aren't I? I'm sure I'm protected. I've got rook uh, and bishop on it. All right, all right. That's my opposing rook strategy. That, That's my opposing rook strategy. Right. Where am I activating my bishop to this time? I will also say that this is, uh, oh, we, we, we don't actually normally play this fast. <laughs> uh, the games we play, we tend to take quite a long time to play. So this is going to get rather confusing. Um, and the moves, the moves probably may I'm be... Gonna castle. May they be... call it castling whenever you put your king, uh, or hopefully safer, put it towards the edge of the board in the opening. Right. Now I'm so gonna... you castle lots of times in a game in Shogi. I think that this is called reclining silver, which is where you bring your silver up uh, ahead of your pawns um, and uh, it sort of uh, supports uh, an advance. OK, well, I'm going to try and take a big pawn centre then stop this reclining silver. Going Ooh, too far. Right, OK. Well, I am going to... Um, what am I going to do? Um, um, I can't move the pawn on there, actually, because it's attacked by this pawn and this knight. So that's uh, a little bit annoying. Um, what else have I got? Um, yeah, this is always the uh, the bit where you realise that um, you're not quite sure what you're doing. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to move my pawn up here. I quite like that move. It's quite funny learning a new game and like that time where you don't quite know what you're doing, but you're working out strategies. Don't quite. Oh, <laughs> for me, it's completely not. <laughs> okay. It's... Uh, so what's he trying to do with this pawn? I don't know, but I'm going to move my king in here. I think. Right. OK, so um, let's have a little think about what we want to do. Um, um, I am thinking at some stage I might want to move my pawn up here. Um, I'm thinking, well, this bishop's blocked the diagonal. Maybe I'm going to just move my bishop back here. Would that be a good move? I'm not sure. Um, actually, come to think of it, I'm going to move this pawn up here. Um, actually, so we're, we're still in a, a manoeuvring phase of the game. Well, that's kind of because we're not quite sure what to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just create... It's, uh, it's nice to have an escape for your king sometimes, just in case 
Um, you actually go on these king runs sometimes. All yeah, the it's way. Yes, it's my clock. Yeah, it's, you're <laughs> talking in. <laughs> you can you can move. <laughs> well, you had the mouse. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. Um, That's my trick when I get in when you are in severe time trouble. Right. Okay. Um, I think I am going to. Oh dear, what am I going to do here? Um, you got to talk to your pieces, right? Yes, talk to my pieces. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move my pawn Alpha up. Zero talks to its pieces, right? That's right. But uh, okay, so <laughs> you're right. Matthew's pushing. This these is pawns. this is uh, actually uh, rather risky. What I've done, I think I've done it completely wrong, actually. But never mind. Okay, I'm not quite sure what he's doing, but I'm going to push myself up. Right, I'm going to bring my knight out now. Ah, okay. Ah, right. So, okay. That so, makes okay, sense, doesn't it, I see it, Natasha? now what you're trying to do. So Matthew wants to put his knight here to attack my silver, because the silver is considered to be worth a bit more than the knight. Um, also, I have to worry because if I move the silver off this diagonal, he could, oh. he could open up this... Uh, you notice this stuff like that as chess players, don't you? Yeah. So actually, I don't like this that... Too much. My master strategy is paying fruit. Um, so now you so, so you see like it's in chess. Would you would you move your pawn right in front of your king to stop the enemy pieces coming in? And in chess, you're pretty careful not to do that stuff. Um, do I want to do it? I don't know. Actually, I. Maybe. Oh god, I just noticed something. Oh. Maybe notice. I think I'm going to move my central pawn. I'm just going to keep pushing my centre pawns up. Ooh. See, my rook's got space. It's not... Yeah, yeah, yeah can, give me the mouse. I can swing it and then you're going to be frightened. Well, you don't even know which file I'm going to put in on. All right. Um, this is... Is this interesting? I'm not impressed, to be honest. What aren't you impressed about? Um, this plan. I'm not too impressed with this plan, I have to say. I'm just going to take it. Okay. Kachink. Pawn it. in hand. Yeah. Okay. So that. So he's got a pawn there, so he can drop it actually, which is a good point. Um. So if I take back, I do have to be a little bit careful about this diagonal. I might move my king at some point just to uh, get it out of the way. Uh, but I better recapture this pawn. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it with my silver. Right. Now, um, this isn't always good, but I, I think I've got a cunning plan. So, uh -oh. uh, so I'm dropping my pawn oh, back okay. in. Oh, that's a pawn. Yeah. Yes. Dropping the pawn back in. Okay. So he's dropped the pawn back in. So I can either advance further with my silver or drop back. Um, probably the best thing is to drop back. So, but I'm going to... I always like advancing, actually. I'm going to advance. Ooh, okay. So now the silvers are opposing each other. They're both defended by their. Players. And we're getting pieces to drop. You can see how um, you know all of a sudden. Um, of course, it's also because we're uh, we're beginners as well. But uh, but the, the the position is is opening up a little bit. So um, um, now I te one of my problems I do tend to play a little bit like checkers and just <laughs> take everything that comes along. Um, but I am actually going to do this. I'm going to yeah. take the silver. No, I think you're right too. I'm going to recapture, of course. And uh, I'm actually going to um, move this pawn up here now. Okay, now I do I do need to worry about this bishop on the diagonal. But I can always block the diagonal, it's not, not like I can't. Um, so, if I take, he's going to take back with the gold. He can't take back with the knight, of course, because they don't go that way. Um, I can't put my bishop in here because of his pawn. Uh, I do have a silver to drop. Is there somewhere exciting to drop it? Remember, the silver is one that, so yeah. that, that takes diagonally, so it can take diagonally forwards, diagonally back. Yeah. And whenever there's a space, I mean, you can see there's space opening up um, in the positions, so you're always looking to uh, to drop something. And that's actually why you do try and keep quite a few pieces around your king, because, uh, um, you know, the potential for causing chaos with a, a piece parachuting out of nowhere um, mm. Is quite big actually. So, oh, right. uh, oh you're attacking my pawn, aren't you? I better take this one. All right. Um, funnily enough, I was going to. Um, uh, one of my plans was to move my rook to here, 
Um, but I was thinking he might actually drop the silver then on this square where it attacks the rook and also defends the pawn. But I'm going to give a a little discovered check here. Check. I will... Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> um, I just think I'm going to drop my up, but I think I'll actually, actually put my silver in. Ooh, okay. So uh, that's quite that's quite good. Whenever you know the opponent uh, is forced to uh, um, you know to do stuff like that, then um, uh... I'm forced to. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, well, I'm not quite sure what I'm, whether I'm doing this right at all. Um, the one thing that I'm a bit worried about is uh, there's obviously a knight here that's threatening to take a pawn, uh, so I could take back with a silver with a gold rather, which would, uh, well, but then obviously I don't really want to give up a, a gold for uh, for a knight in uh, principle. If I take there, then the bishop's going to take and going to be aiming towards my king, which might be uh, um, a little bit annoying. But um, I there's something else I like about it. So what do you think, Matthew? Um, I've got all sorts of nice ideas actually, but I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do them. This knight taking the pawns annoying me, scaring me a little bit. That's what I'm going to do, maybe. We'll see. Because um, that would also support this um, this uh, uh, pawn uh, promoting. Um, tricky. Yes, but I need to, to move and quite a bit slow, just like in chess, actually. Um, so many ideas, so many, so many moves. Um, OK. Would that be? Oh, I've got so many cunning ideas, you wouldn't believe. Um... Oh, well, wait a minute. What the hell? Oh, here comes the silver. Silver fork. Silver fork. I'm forking my silver and my bishop. Well, of course, the silver's only worth the same as the silver, so it's not too bad. Are you claiming you're not impressed with my plan? Well, I'm not frightened. Ooh. <laughs> um, okay, but do I take it or do I retreat? I think I just take this. Take it. All right, we'll take it back. I mean, actually, ooh. It's also something that would be that would be interesting. Ooh, what do I want to do here? All right, well, I'm going to... Uh, taking off would be interesting. You swap off yeah. the bishops and you get bishop drops. I'm going to do this. Matthew's a little bit frightened of the bishop exchange, so he's gone for... I wouldn't say I'm frightened. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> the other line. <laughs> um, okay, I think what I will do, actually, is take this pawn. Yeah, so... That's kind of so the knight's attacking the bishop now. Yeah, so if he does, and uh, it, would all, it would also the knight's actually threatening to take it and then promote. If you can see what I mean, and then it would be attacking the rook. That's uh, one of the cunning things. So I'm just going to move out of the way. Yeah. So you notice that um, that Natasha's got uh, got two pawns uh, extra now. I think yes. Yes. But I'm claiming that my initiative compensates for everything. So I want to put on a silver somewhere. Actually. Like that. Um, I won't do. I was, I was looking at putting the silver here, but actually, I also want to promote to there, so I, I want two different things for that square. Now, I do have to worry about that um, because it, it opens up a discovered check, which is a tactic in shogi, just, just like in chess, really. Um, now, if I put my knight in the way. Matthew does have a knight there, so this pin is sort of a bit of a 
Okay. Um, it's looking quite dangerous for you, Dash. Um, I don't know about that, but... Um, and the clock's ticking and the pressure's rising. You're facing a strong grandmaster. <laughs> not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> not used to trash talk, Natasha. <laughs> Uh, okay, but actually, yeah, I, d I do want to block this thing. I do want to block this thing because I don't like that. Don't I? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put my notes up. Right. Ooh. Um. All right. I'm gonna do night fork. Yes. Is that a good move? I think it is a good move, actually. Fine, so he's attacking my knight and my bishop. I don't want him to take my bishop, I believe. I want to go back. Just defend. Right, okay. So now I'm going to... Oh, God, I wish I had time to calculate any of this, but I'm, I need to keep the pressure up. I'm going to promote the doink. Check. All right, I better take that. I'll take it with the gold. Right, and now um, I'm going to do a nasty... I shouldn't have taken it with Born the gold. <laughs> I should have taken it with the bishop. Born promotes. And remember, well, that's the, a real so, the, so the bishop can't go forwards. Uh, I promoted the pawn and my bishop and my oh, no, I'm actually in promoted trouble. gold are attacking the gold. I'm in trouble because this one. Um, so I have to think what I want to do. Ah, right. So my bishop is not dependent. I can drop backwards. Actually, this is... I'm in a bit of trouble, I think, but I'm going to just drop that. Right. So what I'm going to do here now... Ooh, I've got so many nice possibilities. Uh, the problem is that Shogi is actually quite tough to... Uh, it's tough to put away your opponent. I mean, taking is, is very tempting because I could take everything off. I could drop a knight then with check. That would be very easy. Um... I could also think of dropping other pieces as well. Um, the, yeah, the, the point is attacking momentum is pretty much everything in uh, in Shogi. So, um, um, uh, let's have a little think about that. I'm just going to do, I'm just going to try and play it uh, uh, simple. Duck. Okay, so my king's attack. Now they say often you run actually away from the attack on the king, but this is quite powerful. So my choice is really whether to take that with my bishop takes, takes, and then can he make me? Um, or to run away straight away. I think I'd better take this thing. All right. So you don't notice that, you know, whilst we're taking pieces here, um, we are always promote. Uh, we are actually uh, nicely uh, uh, increasing the, the attacking forces that we have. Right. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop. Um, there's my piece on here. So I'm going to drop a knight check on here. Right. Where can I run away? So notice I'm um, I'm uh, covering a, a number of very nice squares, and uh, remember this is looking really dodgy for me actually. Uh, it is, but you're ahead on time, so you're doing nicely. Uh, uh, right. What have we got? Bishop, gold, silver. I've got the whole caboodle. Oh dear. Um, okay, I don't think I like this very much. Uh, right, so I could even think about coming forwards. Mm -hmm. Oh, moving forwards this way. This has got to be it, hasn't it? <laughs> what? This way, this has got to be the move. <laughs> yeah, this is now this is always the slide <laughs> problem with uh, Shogi. It's, um, uh, and you know, as a beginner, I do find this quite tough. Is, um, <laughs> That uh, trying to capture a king that's um, uh, that's moving forwards because the point is all your pieces move forwards in general. Um, however, what I'm going to do, I think, is drop a bishop on here, Buck, um, which looks quite bit, painful. This does actually look really bad. Um, okay, so at least the bishops. Well, okay. If I take this knight, which is what I want to 
do, then I think you can put a, a gold here or silver. I go here on there. Is that good? I'm tempted actually to just try it. Um, but here, I sort of feel like I might get mated in one. That's the only thing. A gold here, I hear, moves out of the way with a discovered attack. And I've got three in one, that's okay. I can't come back this way. If I go here... Uh, right, I think I'm just going to try something quickly. <laughs> right, so what I think is that... We've probably seen a mate already. Um, I think I can drop a, a gold here. Yeah, you can. Um, and then when the king moves up, I just move the gold up. I think I'm delivering mate, but I'm uh, um, again, I'm, we're not always quite sure about these things. So I think that's the only move. Now, what I do is I move my gold forward, discover check. And the gold is covering uh, the square oh, backwards, no, I think. Oh, no, because this bishop's going to promote yeah, when it the, moves out of the room. Th that's, that's the key thing, the I think. bishop is going to promote to that. Remember, the knight's not covering any backward squares. So, I don't have much choice of moves here. I can't go there. I can go there. But I get mated with bishop. Bishop here's to promote is the move I'm worrying about. And I think... I can't stop it. Um, so, oh, I can't go there. Um, all right, well, I've also told Matthew what the move is. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's go that way. All right, and now this is the, the cunning stuff that you can do. So this one's covering this one back. So what I can do is go here, and then <laughs> better make sure I click the right one, which is promotion. And I think... I th it's not checkmate. It's not checkmate. I thought that was checkmate, but it's not actually. Oh no, it is. Wait, shouldn't it tell you checkmate if it's checkmate? What kind of software is this? <laughs> if it's not checkmate, what square can I go to? You can't go anywhere. I think it's checkmate because I can't take that because this one defends it. I can't take that. You can't can go I take back. This? I can't no, you take can't. This. You can't take it's protected. You can't go back. It looks like checkmate to me. I think it's checkmate. <laughs> I can't take my own pawn. Uh, right. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not, we're not missing <laughs> something, are we? I think this is checkmate. Yeah, I think this is checkmate. Software is. This so is like, checkmate. I'll ask for a hint. Hint. Thinking info. There you are. Oh no, it's telling me a move. <laughs> hmm. Nah, come on. This is checkmate. <laughs> it looks like checkmate to me. I have to say. I feel it is. Don't cheat, you can't use a computer. <laughs> I need to use a computer for, if I'm already checkmated. All right, well. <laughs> if, you can't, if you can't find a move, Natasha, you'll have to. Oh, <laughs> I this, concede, I'm going to run out of time. This is the, I'm in the, checkmate the, and I can't find the, a move. The, the, Even though the computer's <laughs> recommending something, but I can't actually tell what it is. <laughs> uh, can I make it play? Uh, Natasha. All right. I give up. Well played. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, but just actually, it was um, uh, we, we were wondering whether we'd, we'd play a game that was interesting. But you can see the um, uh, actually, I think it was quite quite uh, uh, shows quite a lot of the stuff, I suppose, because first of all, your bishop on the long diagonal was very very powerful. Yeah, it's true. I, I got a bit um, got a bit lucky that it was uh, somehow your, your king got lined up there, and I think when you move that pawn in the center, you moved a pawn in the center to try and create a pawn. That sort of helped me, gave me a lot of time mm. to uh, to do that. But this, you see how quickly the attacks come. Short range pieces, but still, your um, uh, you know, once you start dropping knights and uh, and golds, it's uh, it's it's as quick as. Uh, uh, that's by you only. Now I've got ten seconds to move. Oh, oh dear! Look at that. <laughs> Look, there we there are. Go. Right there we are. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I mean, I hope this, you know, encourages you and uh, inspires you to look at Shogi yourself. I mean, really, uh, we've been, you know, just uh, playing for a couple of months. I mean, we're really bad, obviously, both of us, but it's, um, um, we're having a great deal of fun doing it. And uh, certainly for chess players, the, um, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the fact that you're hunting a king, that you've all the stuff like pins, discovered checks, all these tactical things are, um, are all present. It makes it, you know, nice and intuitive to learn. So, um, 
Hope that's inspired you, and uh, I'm sure we're going to be doing a few more, uh, a few more grudge matches, aren't we? In the uh, in the I future, we are. I need my revenge. <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks very much, and uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, keep on watching.